Joe, welcome back. The nuclear power computers are back operational. We are safe. The radiation hazard is cleared. The Big 19 is taxiing out here. We've got Quetzalcoatl. We're going to call Q for this to keep all on the straight and narrow. As he lives in Poland, is 21 years old. He started flying in simulators in 2009, joined DCS community in the summer of 2015. He used the free TF-51D and SU-25T for two years. Over that time, he managed to collect all aircraft available at DCS. And now, about ready to give you an example of what the MiG-19 Farmer is truly capable of. Q took part in the Sochi Invitational Air Show one year ago in the MiG-19P, wearing the Bort number 905, used in the Polish Air Force. The second virtual air show was in talk, Thunder over Katasi, which we held here at Mugga Virtual Pilot. This time he went into the Polish Air Force MiG 29A, board number 56. Well, now he's back in the MiG 19, as you can see there. And he's got board number style that matches the real life counterpart used in, the, in Poland. And besides that, he's actively making historic liveries for MiG 21s as well. In real life, he's an aviation enthusiast participant. A spectator in seven air shows in his area. Visited the Polish Aviation Museum in Krakow four times. Obviously inspired, continue to be inspired by the legacy and uh, just the historical nature of aviation from where we all live, really. And in 2014, he had the opportunity to, opportunity to do three flights as a passenger on a glider. And he's been still hooked ever since. It's the MiG-19, the farmer. Gonna go and run those throttles up to Tomoski RD-9B afterburning turbojet engines. Rated an afterburner at 7,100 pounds each. As he prepares to take off here. That's Sochi. We're glad to have you back, by the way. This is Chris Stryker Curtis. Sochi Invitational Air Show. As you can see, back up and running. Performer Quetzalcoatl, known as Q. He's queued up on the runway, ready to take off and demonstrate. The reason why the Russians, back then the Soviet Union, loved this aircraft. Big shout out, thanks to the, all the staff making it happen here today. And again, again, we have more MI-24s to, to give out. So make sure you enter that as well as he's got the throttle up, the burners lit from the left, the Big 19, Quetzalcoatl, here at Sochi. Listen to the roar of this jet, folks. Wings swept back of this aircraft. Yeah, you, you name it. Such uh, such sweep on this. Look at those stall fences on the side. Just to make sure that this thing won't stall as easily. Don't get that wrong with any of this capability of this aircraft as well. It's got a lot to deliver, as it has historically. As Q makes his way back around for a level flight around block runway 24. Again, this is the Soviet second generation single seat twin engine. There they are, right? You can see them right there, both went still. Fighter aircraft, the world's first mass produced supersonic aircraft. It entered the Century Series for the Americans. It was the first Soviet production aircraft capable of supersonic speeds and level flights. And it weighs right there against the F-100. As now it is into the vertical. Coming back for another level flight parallel runway 06. Coming down at 540 knots because it's 1,000 kilometers per hour. Yeah, 1954, 1968, 2,172 of these aircraft were built. As he goes into his half Cuban 8, he rolling on the back half on the descent. Look or not, this aircraft had a good canopy allow, a good visibility for the pilot. All the three hard hitting, a 30 mic mic, a 30 
No one your cannons. The U.S. pilots found the Big 19 to be an excellent liner. Like the Big 17, could easily outturn the Phantom. Could out accelerate the F4 out to Mach 1.2, but was slower than the Big 29. He goes up once again for a half Cuban A. Roy back on the beast sense. Look at that. It's just sleek in every way, and it delivers in every way, just like that. Climbing high, surface ceiling, 57,400 feet. He's not going to go that high today to make it back down, but he's getting close enough for what you can do. He slides to the right there. Ready to climb on this jet. Get this. He just saw a little bit of it. 35,000 feet per minute. As Q brings the Big 19 back to Mother Earth here at Sochi. Look at that tail cam. Looking for high speed. Look once again to show left. Q demonstrating it once again here. Big 19 style. Show center. Afterburner shock rings on both engines. He wakes his babe back over the top. Gotta keep that back pressure always. Now, this version was equipped with an RP1. Radar in the nose. You look in the two inlets, right in the middle. It's one of those cannons. During their service with the Soviet anti-air defense, and in East Germany, Big Night teams were involved in multiple interceptions of Western reconnaissance aircraft. The first documented encounter was with a Lockheed U-2 that took place in autumn 1957. The pilot of that big one, I report, seeing the aircraft, but could not make it up to, <laughs> to the night, the altitude, as you can imagine. So I believe later on, let's look to the drawing board, Big 21s, Big 25 solved that problem. As he comes back down, the gear extended. Look at the trail of the exhaust of the Eastern aircraft of the display. Slowing it down now, breaks out. I bet if he could put his hand, can it be out, he'd be putting his hands out too for this one, folks. Amazing job for this module as well. Of course, find it on Digital Combat Simulator.com, Big 19 module. Pick it up. range of this fighter, 750 nautical miles, not bad considering it has two engines, everybody. So it's going to need a lot of gas though, that's why it's got uh, 480 US gallons. Or, so you can go inside to enjoy ride cat chopper, our lucky individual, look at that, enjoy that. Another different, I guess a different vantage point to watch in the Big 19. I wonder what they're discussing in there. Probably I'm glad it's uh, not the not the times where we were we were enemies with this amazing fighter as he comes back around and she'll left getting some speed on her. And Q lighting the burners in the turn, pulling hard, pulling the G's, even swept wing. Look at this. Turn rates. This could out turn an F4. 
at low altitude, not a problem, just as demonstrated right before your eyes right there the tail cam. Look at that nice rollout reversal. Full burners still. Again, to activate the burner of this aircraft, you actually have to push the throttles forward and, and then activate it separately by a different switch. No FADEC controls here, all manual. Good backdrop for the MVP chopper crews. Out in force there. As Q brings it around once more, continue to roll and pull throughout this demonstration. Lots of loops coming your way and burners and everything. Sochi. <laughs> and there he is from the control booth where we all are. Our little home for today's events. You see that beautiful flight line around us as well. Again, not one engine but two here and in full afterburner right in front of your eyes. This aircraft carried a lot of different orbits for the time. Of course, drop tanks extending its ferry and tactical range. But not here today, as he's got it nice and slick. I'm sure he really likes it to demonstrate this in its full capacity here at Sochi. up for Q in the big 19th of show left coming on the down line. Again, the big 19 was actually introduced also in Vietnam. Everything that it was originally designed to do back in the 50s and early 60s. And we now go from the cafe lounge view. I know we have Top Dog. Do we have any like Top uh, Starbucks or anything like down there? I don't know. We'll let you know. As that's right, Ghost Dog. Yes, Q knows what he's doing with this jet. Very smooth flying. And he has done this routine, I dare to say, once or twice. As he ventures above the cloud deck, finding good thing he doesn't have to worry about the weather too much right now. Maybe in future installments with the updates as he wicks his way back down. Big hole between the clouds there. You can't even really see him at this altitude, but they are up there. Giving our camera operators a little challenge today. Look at that altitude coming down, getting that speed. Look at the air brakes out full on the bottom, right under the wings. As we get ready for our next shout out here to Lenny and the L39C. Look at that paint scheme. He'll be wowing us here shortly as well. As I've heard, he's getting uh, 
pumped up and ready to go for his final preparations for his display. But we go back now to Q as he's not done, folks. He's continuing to roar around the sky, the show box that is Sochi here. Yeah, there are rules to this fly. You don't want to go inside the 45 lines right in between over the crowd. And he's doing that just superbly as well as he's got his gear coming down for final approach here. Just slow down about 300 kilometers per hour, 162 knots to recover at runway 24. Not an easy recovery too. You can see the elevating, uh, elevated and under, uh, I guess uh, underlying terrain there. As you watch him come on down. You get three sets of air brakes underneath and on the sides. As everybody give uh, give it your positive thoughts and, and feedback there to Quetzalcoatl and his big 19 farmer demonstration here at Sochi. Well done, sir. Make sure to get those. <laughs> That's right. Get those exclamation points going for the high and giveaway. Don't miss out on that. Plenty more for those as well. As well as other awards. Stay tuned for that. We want to thank, of course, Eagle Dynamics, Thrustmaster, AOPA of Australia for all their great support during this event. A few technical hiccups here and there. There always is on things that uh, are pushed to the limits as we are here at Sochi. I want to thank, of course, the crew, the staff, and more importantly,